Hello Internet. We're doing a uh, day in the life of kind of thing. I got an email from YouTube asking me, There's Lurch, Vicious Killer. Asking me to do a sort of day in the life type video. And I guess they're going to make like a little, they kind of want to get uh, a view of everybody's life during this whole pandemic thing. And so I thought I would go ahead and just make a whole video out of it and then they can take clips if they want to. But uh, I'm putting my shoes on outside here because I've got a nephew visiting and he's asleep on the couch and I don't want to bother him. But uh, I did forget one thing. My sunglasses. But to be honest, my life hasn't changed a whole lot. Um, I get up, I go to work, I come home, you're a killer, I'll come pet you in a second. See it? See it? Good boy. Mama will let you loose when I get gone. That way you can't follow me down the road. Oh, precious baby. You're a good boy. Uh, normally I'm a school bus driver and part-time mechanic at the school bus garage and basically since this whole deal started uh, we canceled school I don't even remember it was it was after Christmas I think we went to school for January we might have canceled it in February I don't know it's 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 been a while but basically uh, for the remainder of the school year the children did NTI work, either online uh, or we would deliver uh, packets to them. And since then, uh, we have been delivering meals to them. And because uh, we've been using the buses to deliver the meals, uh, the buses have stayed on the road, which means that we as the mechanics are still employed. Because if a bus is on the road, we have to be available in case it breaks down and we also uh, have to do monthly maintenance on every bus we've got uh, if that bus drives and so I haven't really been affected that much in fact I'm probably making more money because they're giving us a little bit extra uh, for being out and about and around people during the pandemic uh, but uh, I get up, I take a shower and brush my teeth and everything, I get dressed, I go to work. The only difference really is that there's no children involved right now, like I, they're not on the bus going to school, you know, I might see them at the stop. Just, I usually listen to NPR in the morning to sort of get a handle on what's going on in the world of news. But one of the things about this area is that, like, our county only has seven cases. And I don't think any of them have died. So, for the longest time, we felt really isolated here. Kind of like, I mean, I knew it was real. I didn't, you know, I wasn't one of those people that thought that it was a conspiracy. But, uh... It almost didn't feel real, you know, because for the longest time we didn't have any cases. And we were hearing about New York, you know, 700 a day, uh, you know, and people dying at such a rate that they didn't even have anywhere to put the bodies. And, uh, and it, it almost didn't feel real because for us here, life never life continued as normal you know we had the governor put out statewide uh, rules and restrictions but even that it, like I said it didn't really apply to us because we didn't have any cases and so uh, nobody really then and kind of still now is, is nobody's really taking it seriously and we've got seven cases in our in our county but, uh, you know, we live out in the woods, 
and uh, we're sort of isolated from each other. The town has a population of I think 12 or 1300 uh, and the county as a whole is something like, I don't know, somewhere in the neighborhood of 15,000, give or take a couple thousand. Uh, it was 12,000 I think in 2010. Uh, we, we may have even lost people, I don't know. But we have fewer people in our entire county than places like Chicago and New York have per square mile. And so there's a big difference in the way disease can transmit. And there's a big difference in the way people react and behave around each other too. It's weird, you know, we're a lot more physically spaced out, but I think when it comes to interpersonal uh, relations and interactions, we're a lot more uh, close to each other than in a place like New York City. You know, I'm probably related to a lot of the people I see on a daily basis. I know a lot of them, either through other people or I went to school with them. You know, like our sheriff's deputies, I went to school with a couple of them. And, uh, you know, it's one of these places where everybody knows everybody. I don't know, this whole pandemic has just not, it doesn't really, doesn't really feel real other than, you know, like I know it is, and I wear a mask, and other people around wear masks, you know, when they, when they go into businesses and things. But we've been pretty shielded from it here. And like the seven people that we do have, I know of one of them, and he's fine. Well, I, I personally know one of them, and he was fine because they've got children there, and uh, they couldn't go shopping. Or, or anything while the whole household basically was on quarantine so I would still go up there and I would deliver lunches uh, because the school bus doesn't normally go up to their house they like walk out to the end of the road and get them but you know they couldn't and so after work I would take uh, a few lunches up there and set them at the end of their driveway and then sort of beep the horn as I left to let them know that I had been there, but, you know, I don't know, it just, it feels weird, uh, to be honest with you, because you see all this panic and drama on the news, and like I said, New York City was just getting hammered, it just seemed like on a daily basis they had, and, and here, mostly, life hasn't really changed all that much. Grab us breakfast real quick. Well, we have done quite a bit of driving recently. Uh, my in-laws live about 300 miles from here. They're still inside the state of Kentucky, but uh, they're almost as far as you could go from here and still be in the state. Oh Lord. Oh, they uh, live in Crittenden County and Webster County and Caldwell County, the ones we visited. And uh, that's where we picked up our nephew at. They've got more cases than we do. Lexington and Louisville are the biggies. Uh, we have to go through Lexington on the way out there, but we didn't stop and go in anywhere. Uh, well, we did go in and use the bathroom at a gas station. But, uh, you know, we'll stop and get fuel, run in, use the bathroom real quick. But that's about, that's about it. I thought really hard about going into the Cracker Barrel because they've got a Cracker Barrel there. Man, they've got thousands of cases there. And uh, I don't know how many dead. But it's, it's like New York City, not nearly as bad because it's not New York City. But... You know, the reason they have so much more is because it's a lot more densely populated. There's a lot more people, more packed together. And also, in addition to that, you've got a lot of people who don't live there who travel through there to get to other places because uh, Lexington and Louisville are, you know, reasonably sized metropolitan areas. 
that are close to the border with Ohio. Uh, Interstate 64 and 75 cut right through there. Uh, and so you've got a lot of people who don't even live in Lexington who will travel through there uh, to get to other places. And then you add on top of that the fact that Lexington, like I said, is a lot more densely populated. Uh, and you've got a, a recipe for a bad day. But we're pulling into work here, so I'll catch y'all a little later. I'm doing all right. Could I? You order whenever you're ready. A uh, steak quesadilla meal with a Baja Blast and a crunchy taco, please. You said steak quesadilla. Yes, ma'am. Steak quesadilla meal, crunchy and a Baja Blast. Okay, is that going to be all for you? That's it. Would you like any sauces? Fire sauce. It's going to be 729 at the window, thank you. Please go forward. Everybody's out getting lunch right now. Mickey D's, Wendy's, Taco Bell, Dairy Queen, Subway. So, uh, done with work for the day. Got to run some errands, pick up a few items at the store, and go home. I'm going to try to cut a little brush. Eat me a little something first. I'm hungry and then cut some trees and brush and take care of some chores around the house for the evening. But first, to true value, I've got to pick up some nuts, bolts, uh, some flat uh, flat stock steel, maybe some wood screws. Uh, going to put some bunk beds back together so that my nephew has uh, a bed that's not on the floor since he's going to be here for a few days. And the wooden dowels that are supposed to hold the bunk beds together are missing or broken or something. So I want to get some little flat brackets to put the bump beds back together. And, uh, so to true value first. Alrighty, so let's get in here and do some shopping. Do new part gloves. That's my boy. That's a good boy. Yes, you is. No, I love you too. Good job. You didn't come near the car while it was running. Now look, I have to go inside to do stuff. I've got things I need to do, okay? Can I go in the house? Is that a no? Way to go, hero. Fired. Why are you recording? I don't know. I feel like it. Do say the cool part. I don't know, watching you drill over Ryan's head might be fun. <laughs> For all the parents who have to listen to it every day. 
Oh, no, no, wait, wait. And just who do you think you are, turd head? No, these aren't. That one's yours. This one's not. Meanest dog around. While we're on the subject of pandemics, uh, this is, we own all of this. All the way down through there. There's a cemetery right back there. It's got... Some little babies that died of the Spanish flu in this area. Pretty sure, sure it is the Spanish flu. So there's a couple of them that all died within uh, a short time span around 1917, 1918. Uh, I'm going to try to make another video where I go back up there. I made one years ago on YouTube, uh, but I'd like to go up there again and check it out. This is one reason you'll have to excuse the mess we've been working and I haven't gotten around to weed eating and cleaning up like I should have. But, uh, there ain't nobody for a while. That mom and dad are down there around the hillside. That's what I'm saying. Social distancing, no problem here. But, uh, yeah. I realize we've got things a little bit better than the people in places like New York, but that's what I was saying earlier. It's, it almost doesn't seem real to us here. Because it's just like, you know, life was normal, really. Alrighty. Let me see. How far over did the two baits come? Oh, they did good. I guess y'all just spaced them a little bit. But yeah, that'll be fine. That ain't enough to hurt anything. Good solid base for it. What? I will quit posing for the camera. <laughs> But now, I didn't realize that you had lost these or I would have picked some more up at True Value. I didn't realize until I brought them in here. I thought we'd stuck them in the ends. Yeah. So, these ain't going nowhere. So, these little we'll Torx to head screws, which, I mean, they're plenty long enough, but that's that's, that's going to be the weak point. If anything moves or gives, it'll be that. But even those, yeah, that, that's a lot stronger than, well, <laughs> most bunk beds I've seen. The metal ones are terrible. So that's a day in my life, basically. Uh, get up, go to work, go to lunch, come home, do chores around the house. And then I go in the house, eat supper, play Nintendo Switch, surf the internet, edit this video, uh, just hang out with the family. Feed the animals. Or feed the... the... Ah, I love you too, Lurch. And go to bed and get up and do it again. <laughs>